Okay, this is Misty Caprio, and I am going to show you today how to attach a handle, a slab built handle, on the side of your slab mug. Uh, you can see here that I have uh, rolled a slab, I uh, turned it into a cylinder, I slip and scored it together where it meets, and then I attached a base. I used a cookie cutter um, to be able to trim out my base so that I knew it was a perfect circle which just helps give you a guide to try to create a perfect cylinder shape. And then I've let it set up to firm up a little bit. It's medium leather hard now. I could still clean it up. I could still move it around and um, do some different things. I could attach something if I wanted, like a handle or a three-dimensional object. I could even press a texture into it if I wanted to. Uh, but today I'm just going to show you about adding a handle. Um, I've, I've made this mug, this shape, by using just a piece of paper. Um, I folded it for how tall I wanted it. I rolled slab and then I used it and I cut out this rectangular. You could see here that this is the same height uh, because I've used this as the guide and trimmed it out and so that's how I created my template for my slab mug. Now for the handle I simply used the same slab that I rolled for the outside of the mug and I just used a ruler and by trimming side the sides of the ruler I was able to create this uh, slab shape here that you could see that I cleaned up the edges using the sponge and I have set out to firm up slightly it's still kind of medium leather hard but your life's going to be a little bit easier if it has a little bit of stability to it and time really is what will give you that if you're in a bit of a rush or you want to move the process along slightly uh, you can use a hair dryer i use the hair dryer on a cold setting for maybe about a minute and that helped me kind of firm it up just slightly so it's not super gooey and so gravity doesn't work against you. I would try and use a hair dryer that has both the hot and the cold setting. If you're using both heat and air it will dry rather rapidly and you do run the risk of it cracking so I like to use the cool setting so that you get the air but not the heat along with it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to want to do is try to figure out where on the body of mug I'm going to attach my handle. Of course, you're going to want it in the center of your mug, um, but I like to always figure out where the seam was. That's where the clay met itself, and I could kind of tell because it's not perfectly straight. There's a little bit of an indent here that kind of gives me the guide. I used um, a metal rib tool to help kind of clean that up as best as possible so that you couldn't see that but by putting the handle there it just helps if there's any imperfections right there it kind of hides it so I usually try to find the side of the mug that the seam is on to use as my spot placement for my handle so that it kind of hides it now the first thing you're going to want to do is kind of figure out the center of your mug and I like to look directly on top of it and Right across from the seam, I'll just kind of give myself a bit of a guide just by gently pressing in. You could see how I've given myself little hash marks here and here, and that tells me that that is the center of the mug. Now, if I rotate it just slightly and I use any kind of tool, I could give myself kind of a, a guideline so that I could kind of tell where that center of the mug is. So when I attach my handle, I'm attaching the top of the handle directly over the bottom of the handle so that when I go to use the mug, it doesn't feel all wonky and it makes sense. Now is when I'm going to want to determine how big I want my handle to be. And here's where having it be slightly leather hard but not super hard helps because you could kind of move it around to determine. And just by placing the mug kind of right on top of the handle, I could give myself a bit of a guide where to start. Remember, it's always better to start with a little bit more. You could always cut more really easily. It's much harder to cut less, of course, or to add clay. So I like to cut on a 45 degree angle straight down from my little guides. And this is going to give me more surface area to work with. And that 45 degree angle is going to help in just a minute. So you could see here that now when I place my handle, 
up to that guideline, I'm going to be able to kind of tell what it's going to look like and give myself a little bit of a understanding of if I were to attach it right now, what shape would that be and do I like that size? Do I like the shape? Do I like the size? And do I want to make any adjustments? And you could be the one to determine that. I think I like the way that looks. I think it's a nice big mug and I like this big handle. And so I'm going to use that as my handle as is. So now is when I get to line up that handle on my guideline directly up and down. And I'm going to take a tool and I'm going to just gently press in to the body of the mug where that handle meets. You can see this is the top of the handle, the bottom, and the top and bottom of the bottom of the handle. Okay, and again, I'm following it directly on my score line. So here is when I'm going to want to slip and score where those two meet. This is a really important step, of course, because you are going to want your handle to stay on there nice and tight. And so don't be afraid to do nice deep score lines. And you're gonna do the same thing obviously on the back side of your handle. So we're going to slip and score that. And don't worry if it moves a little, you're gonna have the opportunity to kinda of place it where you want it. And we're gonna slip and score that. So nice, nice deep score lines to help us out. Here's where your slip is gonna come in handy. So I have a, a little bucket of slip over here and I'm going to load it on up with some slip on the handle and a little bit on the mug as well. Okay, now by relining that handle up to the body of the mug, you're going to put some gentle pressure to really get it to stick on there. Double check your hash mark again. If you're a little bit off, just make those adjustments. When you look right on top, you're gonna to want it directly in the center and you want the top of the handle to match up directly with the bottom of the handle. So you can continue to make adjustments until you feel that it's perfectly on there. All right, so I like where that's at. I'm gonna take just a wet paintbrush to kinda help move some of that extra slip around and clean up a little bit of these lines here and the extra slip. Continue to push down. Some videos will show you um, actually cutting that at a little bit of a half moon shape, like a little half circle, if you want that so it fits around there perfectly. That's also a good trick to making a perfect handle that is shaped perfectly to your mug. I actually like to add a support coil, and I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. I'm just gonna kind of clean up these edges so that we have a nice, clean attachment. Now, if you like the way it looks to have a very specific line where the handle meets the body, you're welcome to keep it like this. Obviously, you're going to want to be mindful of any gaps and fill in any gaps where uh, they might exist. Um, let's see on here, you could see it kind of, let's see if I could get it in there. There's a little bit of a gap here. If, if you wanted to keep it where the handle was just very specific, uh, you will just wanna make sure to kind of close up those gaps. I actually like to do one additional step that really makes me feel like the handle is supported. And that is by adding a support coil on the top and bottom rims to really make sure that that handle is attached. I'm gonna show you that now. Get some soft clay. And you can see I just have this extra clay lying around, nothing super special. And I'm going to start by rolling it into a ball and then make a just traditional coil. 
you want the coil nice and soft. You can see this one is a little dry, so I'm actually going to go grab some soft clay. The softer the clay, the easier it's going to be to blend. And so blending nice, soft, gooey clay is actually going to be a benefit for you. So I'm going to make just a pretty traditional coil. You can see here, but I'm using this nice soft clay, so it's going to be really easy to blend. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap, just gently press it in. I'm going to wrap where the handle meets the body. I'm going to wrap it with this clay. Now you can see that this coil is much too big. No problem. I'm just going to kind of pull off the excess. And I'm going to give this support coil a chance to help support that handle. Now, right now you could see, it looks a little weird because you could see the coil, obviously. Here's where you're going to want to, with even pressure, blend that coil into both the body of your mug and into the handle itself. So you take half that coil into the mug and the other half into the handle. Now you can see here I'm just using my fingers for blending. It doesn't require any sort of special tools. If you're looking for a tool to help, uh, obviously a modeling tool is a really good one. It's meant for blending so you might find great success, especially in hard to reach areas where you could take half that coil up and down like that or even any round object like the back of a paintbrush. You could see has that nice round shape to it. So I actually always find great success, especially on hard to reach areas with the back of a paintbrush. So I encourage you to try that out too. And you would simply continue to blend evenly all the way around until you have a nice clean connection between the handle and the mug. The sponge tool is a great one, dipping in a little water to really clean up that coil and the body of the mug. Even on the inside, you can kind of roll it around, add a little water and smooth out that connection. So that extra coil goes a really long way at attaching these two pieces of clay to really make them become one. So now when this mug starts to dry, it's going to dry as one whole unit instead of potentially having that handle crack off. So you can kind of see how with a little bit of cleanup, you have the nice beautiful connection. You could make that coil much larger if you really want the handle to go from small and gradually get bigger. You can re-carve out that line if you want it to have a very specific shape. You can add that coil and then sort of carve it back out so you have the stability but then you also have sort of a clear definition from the handle into the body. So you get to be the artist and choose. You can attach three-dimensional objects. You could use texture. You could carve. You could do anything at this point knowing that that handle is on there. I always like to kind of put my hand on there and really kind of get a sense of what it's going to look like. You can move it around. You could shape it a little bit. As long as your clay is still slightly soft, you have that opportunity to kind of move it a little bit. And of course I would do the same thing on the bottom and then that would give me that nice slab handle connection that hopefully will dry perfectly so that you have a nice clean mug. Now this is a slab handle. You could choose a coil, you could sculpt a handle, lots of different options for your handle making. We'll watch a couple of different videos, but that is how you would attach a slab handle on a traditional slab mug.